Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to discuss the books that I've completed thus far in January and to just briefly discuss what I'm currently reading. So January has started off um, kind of slowly for me in the reading front, but I've read some really good books. It just happens to be that my, you know, the rest of my life has been kind of out of control busy lately, so I haven't had as much time for reading as I might have otherwise chosen to have. In any regards, I've read quite a few uh, interesting and lovely books and I'd love to share them with you. So the very first thing that I finished um, in 2018 in January was Akata Witch by Nettie Akorafor. Um, I really have become quite a fan of Nettie Akorafor and this is the first book in a YA series which features a young girl named Sunny who was born in New York and has since moved back with her family to their home country of Nigeria. And as they're living their regular lives in Nigeria, it becomes obvious to Sunny that she's different from the other kids that she knows. Um, and she encounters a couple of other kids that seem to have similar um, differences as she does. And in meeting these kids, she ends up in sort of a magical training camp. So this is all about Sunny learning to learning about herself, learning um, about her magic, and meeting other people who also have magic. And they, uh, an adventure ensues. I found this highly entertaining, very readable. I think I finished it in two sittings, um, and really a great start to a YA fantasy series. I'm definitely going to be picking up book two in this series, um, Akata, Akata Warrior, um, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, so that was a great start to the new year. The second book I completed so far in January was my audio book, which was Carrie by Stephen King. Now this was a reread for me. Uh, I think I read Carrie for the first time when I was a teenager. It may even have been the first Stephen King that I read back in... I don't even know. I was like 14, I think, when I read my first Stephen King. I was definitely a freshman in high school and found um, some Stephen King paperbacks in the library at my high school, and that's where I first started to read Stephen King, and I have since read... I've tried to read everything else that he has written. There are a few odds and ends here and there that I haven't completed yet, um, but I just thought it would be... I don't know. Something before Christmas triggered me to be like, oh, I should go back and re-listen to Carrie be and I don't even remember why I heard somebody's review of Carrie or something and it kind of set me off so I I downloaded the audiobook it's the one that Sissy Spacek narrates um, and I liked everything about it it's a very propulsive narrative but now listening to it as an adult as compared to um, a teenager and also as an adult in 2017 or 2018 um, as compared to being a teenager in the late 80s uh, the sexism and racism is a lot more apparent to me than it was then, um, although I certainly don't think it's one of um, Stephen King's worst books in that way. Uh, and the other thing that kind of bothered me about it was um, Sissy Spacek narrates this with vaguely southern accents. So being a person who's from Maine and knowing that Carrie is set in Maine and having that sort of drawl, southern drawl, um, telling me the story kind of threw me out of the story a few times. So, you know, overall, good experience, but uh, definitely a few flaws that I picked up on this time around. The next thing that I completed was a book that I bought for myself um, with my Christmas gift cards, and that is American War by Omar El Akkad. Um, this has been all over the place um, in the last year. Uh, it's been nominated for prizes or been on prize lists and all that sort of thing and this is a, a near future dystopian novel it takes place um, over a 20 year time span from 20 about 2074 to 2095 and during this time frame um, four southern states have seceded from the Union yet again and there is a new American Civil War going on and this time the cause of the <laughs> so-called cause of the war is um, fossil fuels and in the time period from where we are currently to 2074 like environmental disasters have happened the United States have, has lost 
a ton of coastline, including the entire state of Florida. Um, so, you know, uh, there's been mass uh, immigration into the central part of the country and a, and a complete sea change in how we deal with energy in our government. And so that enforcement of like basically an enforced changeover from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources caused old hates and discontents to flare up between northern states and southern states and caused southern states to secede. So this story follows um, basically one character, our main character, Surat Chestnut. Um, and from a very small child, I think she's six when the story first opens and throughout her entire life, um, the things that happened to her, she's born in a southern, uh, not one of the, the southern states that seceded, but in an adjacent state, Louisiana, which is so-called purple state in, in this world. And what happens to her as, um, you know, a lots of really terrible things happen to her as would, as would happen in a time of war, in a time of upheaval. And the thing that I found interesting about this book is that it really shows how easily people can be converted from just their regular lives to lives of violence, um, to lives of hatred, to being what we would consider terrorists, um, all because of things that happen to them in their personal lives that basically change how they view the world. And you can easily see how this progression happens and how the people that you might think are supposedly good are not necessarily good, that everybody has varieties, uh, varying shades of gray in their lives. The people that you think are the heroes are not necessarily the heroes. The perspective of this book is not what I expected it to be. Um, and I really did like this book. I liked the message that it was um, trying to impart. The only thing I didn't like was the narrative structure. Like the last third of the book, the narrative structure of this completely changes. And we go from the perspective of one character to the perspective of another character. And I really found that jarring and I really just didn't care for it. So my overall estimation of the book has to go down a little bit just because I didn't particularly like how the author handled things in the end of the story. But overall, I really enjoyed this. I guess enjoyed maybe isn't the best word, but I did... I was very engaged in this story and I would um, recommend it to those who like dystopians or who are interested in sort of current pol political issues and how that might go. You know, one, one story of how that might go. Um, definitely check this one out. And then the last book I've finished thus far in January is a nonfiction book. It's 1491, New Revelations of the Americas Before Columbus. Charles C. Mann is the author. Um, this uh, nonfiction was recommended to me by a co-worker after I read Guns, Germs, and Steel last fall. And this basically is a newer nonfiction. I think this came out in like 2006 or 2005. And it, it really expands what we knew or what we know about historical peoples in America. Um, certainly when I went to school, um, we were taught that the Americas were lightly populated when Columbus and his ilk first discovered um, the New World and that it was generally accepted that people had come to into the North and South America over some type of a land bridge between um, Asia and Alaska and that basically societies were not or, or, or cultures were not as developed as they were in the old world as once they came to the new world and this book basically demolishes that entire theory and way of looking at the world and from the new evidence that archaeologists and other um, researchers have found this author very clearly lays out how probably the americas were populated by in a very large number more people at the time of European discovery um, and that those cultures had been 
quite advanced. Um, in fact, the, uh, some of the cities in the, what is now Mexico rivaled European cities of the time. Um, there was certainly, you know, there were roads and plumbing and all the sort of things we um, would ascribe to a more um, developed culture. Those things all existed in the Americas, um, certainly in Central and South America. And I just found this fascinating. I mean, this is this completely turns um, what I learned in history on its head. Um, so there is a sequel to this book, 1492, um, and my coworker lent me that as well. So I'm going to be continuing on with that um, fairly soon. Uh, but definitely highly recommend if you're into history and you want to learn more about the history, the prehistory before European colonization of North and South America, definitely highly recommend. And now for what I'm currently reading, my current audiobook is um, You Don't Have to Say You Love Me by Sherman Alexie. I grabbed this on audio because of all the great reviews and buzz I had heard about um, on BookTube. Uh, definitely um, Vanessa over at Split Reads had been talking about it and some other folks have been talking about it. Um, and I started listening to it, I think it's like a 12 or a 13 hour audiobook, and I have like four hours left to go. And this book is so good. It's so beautiful. It's so amazingly written. It's written with humor and heart and, and just Sherman Alexi reads it himself and he puts so much emotion into it. It's just, but it leaves me raw at times. It is so powerful so that I have to shut it off and I have to take a break from the audiobook. So it's taking me longer than normally an audiobook would take, um, but it's it's really, really good. So I will definitely be finishing that up hopefully in the coming week or maybe even by the end of this week. It is only Wednesday. Um, and then I'm also reading The Changeling by Victor Laval. Um, this is the choice for January for um, Russell's read around the world book club over at his channel ink and paper blog um, I will link that down below in case anybody else is interested this um, novel is um, about a young couple who um, have a baby and their lives are obviously changed they are new parents and as they're adjusting to life as new parents the wife in the couple commits a horrific unimaginable act and the husband of the family must figure out why and what has happened to her and their baby. Um, oh my god this book is crazy. I was not expecting the story that I am getting in this book. I am about just a little under just almost halfway through this this uh the narrative style is is very short chapters so it's like really engaging and really readable and it just keeps you going so many things have happened that i absolutely was not expecting that have like kind of blown my mind so that i just want to keep reading one thing that i did not expect and you learn right in the first few pages of the book is um, the main character i always forget people's names so just let me check apollo cagua um he is a bookseller he like he buys and sells used books and he just this like his childhood story of how reading basically you know saved him and was his only companion in some cases it just resonated anybody who's a reader or loves books will really engage with that part of apollo's character this is very much um, has fantastical elements in it. I'm not sure how much of it, I don't believe we're meant to know at this point in the story, how much of it is really fantasy and how much of it is just the perspective we're being given. Um, but I'm finding it very engaging and highly readable, very much enjoying that. And then the last thing I'm um, reading is my current nonfiction, and that is Come As You Are, The Surprising New Science That Will Transform Your Sex Life by Emily Nagoski um, and this 
is basically a book about human sexuality. And uh, I heard Rebecca Shinsky over on the Book Riot podcast uh, recommend this multiple times. And it's been one that I've been wanting to get to. So I picked it up again with one of my um, Christmas gift cards. So, um, so far I'm about uh, 50 pages into this one. And I am finding the reading, the writing style very accessible. And I'm already learning a lot. So that's great. So that's what I have read so far in January. And what I'm currently reading. And I hope everybody else has found some good books to get themselves through this cold part of the year here in the Northern Hemisphere at least. And I will talk to you later.